Randy. I'm going to talk to you about the teaching of technology in ADHD. And I'm Chrislyn, and I'll be talking. I'll be doing the introduction to technology in ADHD. So ADHD stands for attention, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It affects millions of children. This is a chronic, chronic condition. Uh, therefore, there is no cure, but medical researchers are looking to. Uh, to work with children to help subdue their symptoms. And with some children, this de uh, their symptoms decrease with age, but um, others will suffer fr from it their entire lives. So children or adults with ADHD, they have difficulty with activities that include paying attention, following instructions, <coughs> listening, or finishing tasks. And they can frequently daydream, interrupt conversation, lose important items, or fidget throughout class. When a child goes in to get diagnosed with ADHD, they'll first go through a med medical exam, therefore they can rule out any other factors that may be causing their symptoms. The doctor is going to want to gather information, and this can be uh, personal medical history, family medical history, and school records. From there, they can go um, to do interviews with coaches, teachers, family members, try and get more information on the child. Uh, then they'll go to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, and the child has to score at least uh, six items in two different categories in order for them to be diagnosed with ADHD. And we have some audio for Jamie's part, but it's not. There are some common causes surrounding ADHD. Of these common causes, there's hereditary, exposure to toxic substances, brain trauma, food addicts. Oops, sorry. There are some common causes surrounding ADHD. Of these common causes, there's hereditary, exposure to toxic substances, brain trauma, food additives, bad parenting, and technology. Of all of these, only three have been scientifically proven as a cause. And that is hereditary brain trauma and exposure to toxic substances. Eight years ago, the first iPhone was released. Over the last eight years, ADHD has seen an increase in diagnosis of 42%. If this is a cause or effect, I am not sure, but it is alarmingly interesting. Technology has been in proven to increase dopamine levels or releases in our brain. When we're not using that technology, our dopamine levels drop, which causes boredom in a large percentage of people. According to Wikipedia, boredom is an emotional state experienced when an individual is left without anything in particular to do and not interested in their surroundings. Medicine to treat ADHD and technology both increase dopamine levels in the brain. So how could technology be the cause if it has been proven to do the same thing as the treatment? In my opinion, ADHD is just misunderstood. Technology only serves as a distraction, not a cause. And technology is a common resource that can be used in determining diagnosis for ADHD. Who said I was easily distracted? Squirrel! Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about um, the treat, like teaching how to teach a student that has ADHD, and this is actually very close to my heart because. My stepson does have ADHD, so I work with him a lot on this. Um, my slides are full of a lot of information, but I'm actually going to just talk to you about them because, I mean, if any of you need to know more about it. Um, direct instruction, uh, students who have ADHD, they really need for people to be clear and concise and tell instructions frequently. They can't just, you can't just sit there and, you know, 
tell them like we would here in class, you have, they have to hear it several times for them to understand because their ability to pay attention is so minimal sometimes that they, they don't even hear what you're saying. Um, auditory cues and visual cues are good things to have. Um, so like, for instance, like for my son, we have um, a timer that goes off av every 30 minutes or so and it reminds him that he needs to do something else. It's all, it's all it is is a reminder. Um, peer tutoring, it is good for when they're in the classroom environment is to have like the other kids understand what's happening so that they can help uh, encourage the student to stay on track and it's really, I found with my son that it was more, uh, it was not helpful for him to be sitting by somebody else who was having a hard time paying attention in class. And some of those kids that are more the bad kids, not the kids that have ADHD, tended to push him towards a bad area. So we, ta after talking to the teacher, we learned that um, if we set him with somebody who likes to study, he's gonna pay attention to what that kid's doing. So that helped with us a lot. Um, instructions, multi-step instructions are very difficult for kids who have ADHD. Um, my son, we have to, we have a specific way we learn our spelling words. Uh, we start with, um, we put him in a, like a, a quieter area, like at the kitchen table, and he writes down in the words five times a piece. Once he writes down the words five times a piece, then he recites them to me and tells me what the words are. And then we go to the next step, which is, you know, I ask him the word, and he repeat, he tells me how to spell it. And then we go to the third step, which is where I spell the word, and he tells me what the word is. Um, we have been doing this this way this whole entire year. He got held back in the in kindergarten because he was having such a hard time with spelling that they thought he was going to be in the special ed class. How old? He is right now. He's eight. Um, scheduling. I I have found that if you keep the kids on the schedule. It really helps to keep them on track, and it, with us, we have them every other day, and then we have them ever, every other weekend, so when we try not to deviate from that because the, it's a set schedule at his mom's house and a set schedule at our house for this reason. Um, this is him when he was seven. It's a good idea to keep them active. If you are sitting there and you're, and he's just like, messing around constantly, it's good to get him up and do something. Um, I found that spending too much time on his iPad or um, playing video games, it really isn't that it's bad for him, it's just that he's sitting idle for so long and then as soon as he's done, he's like, oh my gosh, I'm hyper and I need more help. So we have a certain amount of time that he's allowed to do uh, technology. TV, that includes TV, video games, everything. He gets a, about 45 minutes at night. Then afterwards, we have to have him sit down and uh, read a book. This helps like calm him down and bring his levels down. And we go to bed at eight o'clock specifically so that he cannot, because uh, he'll go to bed at eight o'clock but won't fall asleep till 8.30 or 8.45 because his brain just keeps going. Um, being able to reward him, what we have started this uh, year is great because we have, um, once he had a month of 100% on his spelling test, we had a cake and a party, and then we did a three month of 100% on the pretest, to so where he doesn't have to take it on Friday, uh, and we went to go skating, and now we're waiting for the six month mark. If he gets six months of not uh, missing or missing any on his spelling words, then we're going to go to Chicago to the science and industry because he loves the science and industry. Um, the idea is to give them like small term goals and rewards to help them want to do it. Um, this is what we've seen in first grade. We found that you know the teacher would have a long lecture and she wouldn't have anything to do with them and then she wanted him to actually know what she was talking about. <coughs> he was off daydreaming about Legos and what we was gonna do when we got home and all that good stuff. So we had to talk to the teacher about you know, focusing in on him. 
when I talk to him, I specifically have to tell him sometimes, you know, look me in the eye. So let me see what you're doing. Because if you don't keep focusing on that and stay active with him, his eyes will just wander, and he, he doesn't pay any attention to you. Um, structure and organization, this is what I've been talking about. You know, you have to have the organization and structure to keep them on task. This helps with their memory. If you're saying it constantly, it's kind of like you and I. If I'm saying it constantly that you need to do this, then you're going to remember to do it. But if I just say it once, you, are you going to remember or are you not going to remember? Distractions, a lot of the places where I looked said that, you know, completely removing the distractions is what you need to do. And then there was a lot of that, of that said you should not remove all the distractions. I agree with not removing the distractions because if you put him in a room to study and there's no distractions whatsoever, when he goes to the classroom, there's going to be distractions no matter what. The idea is to take away those distractions like, like, if you have an aquarium in the classroom and you set him right next to the aquarium, he's going to be staring at the fish all day long. So the idea is to, to keep him away from the aquarium. Um, this is him. Uh, they just did their Boy Scouts. He's very good at Boy Scouts because they do stuff step by step. And he just uh, did his boat. Um, I found that when he was when he lost he, he got third place but when he lost that final race his confidence went down a lot and so we had to figure out we have to figure out extra ways to boost his confidence back up so we found that if we talked to him about his teamwork or his ability to talk to other and give them praise for their things that helped him out so he was so excited so then he started shaking all the kids hands and being like oh good job and then he was motivated again um, a token economy is like is pretty much that you're going to get a reward for doing something well. Like if I we give out uh, quarters, so that way at the end of the day, if he's done, had a good day, I give him a quarter, and he puts it in. And then at the end of the week, once he has enough quarters, he gets to go to the pinball game, or he gets to go to IGA and stick money and get tattoos. I don't like tattoos, but I still let him do it. Not, I like tattoos, just not on kids. <coughs> so, um, response costs, it's the pretty much the same thing as a token, but it helps control with or helps take care of impulsivity. Um, a lot of these kids, they, they can't help it. They're just going to get jumpy. Um, he's able to stay calm a lot of the time. He's on some medication that helps with this as well. Um, but timeouts, people think that timeout is because they think they're, they're bad kids. And they're not bad kids. The idea is that you only use a timeout when they're acting up. If, you, if they're acting up while they're doing their schoolwork, chances are he's not wanting to do his schoolwork. So he thinks, I'm not going to do it, so I'll just be bad. And then all the other kids are you know, laughing or whatever. And that just, it's kind of like a reward for him. <coughs> is to, so you're only supposed to use a timeout when, when they're being disruptive. Um, and then their attitude, if their attitude stays calm, then that's when you let them out of timeout. You don't, you don't, they say when your kids are little that you should go for every year that they're born, you should go for a minute in timeout. When they get to an older age, you should be able to go by their attitude and see if their attitude has changed by, be, by being in the timeout. This is half says. Uh, slides from here. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, medications, there are a lot of medications that are on here. And she did a lot of research about the different stimulant and non-stimulant drugs. There is Ritalin, which is what my son is on. I hate this drug. I think this drug is a terrible, terrible drug. Um, but it makes him sleepy. It, it makes him just kind of lose that energy. And when like if you have him um, during the summer where because he doesn't have to take it in the summer, if he takes it off the summer, he's so full of life. And then as soon as he starts taking the medicine, he, he gets bound up. Um, he can't go to the bathroom. His appetite is a lot. And he's really, you guys saw him, he's a really little guy. <laughs> he doesn't even weigh 35 <laughs> pounds and he's eight. But um, he, you know, just has lots and lots of issues. He can't sleep or he sleeps too much. Um, 
These are some of the non-stimulant medications. He hasn't been put on Wellbutrin yet, but it has been something that they talked about. But I don't agree with adding another medication to what he's already dealing with. Um, I already talked about that. Jitteriness is one of those things. He does not like to be jittery. It's, it, that's like his major thing is he, he doesn't like to be like this. Um, So the next part is that ADHD treatment uh, should combi combine conventional treatment techniques such as medication, so the stimulant drugs or non-stimulant drugs, along with behavioral therapy uh, to help the student, especially those children that are going to have side effects along with it too, to try and see what we can do with behavioral therapy. One thing that was mentioned was using video games or computer games in order to help them focus that energy, although you might think it will do the opposite. Some of these video games and computer games, they have specific tasks and rewards after you complete the task. Therefore, they're focusing in on following the directions, getting that done, getting the reward, just as uh, Brandy was talking about earlier about doing rewards throughout. So that's actually how technology can help them practicing those focusing techniques. And um, like I said, these are computers, tablets, smartphones. Um, I said video games. I, there was one uh, study done with positive psychology done in adolescents that really helped them focus using video games uh, because it's something that's fun for them to do as well as can keep them engaged. When I was in student teaching, we tried to use the smart board as much as possible, um, getting the students not only just touching the technology because it's interesting, but it makes them get up out of their seat, come to the board, do something, then go back and sit down. So um, in my opinion, that's why I prefer that over, say, an iPad, because an iPad, then you're at your seat with the iPad instead of getting up and moving around. OK. And um, so finally, technology can be a most important tool because it's exciting and interesting for children to use. That's for all children, not just with children who are suffering from ADHD. Um, but it can also be an extra little bonus. Uh, so tablet or smart form applications can be used to develop certain social skills because sometimes these students and an extra condition they may suffer from is having trouble interacting with their peers because of the interruptions, the fidgetiness, um, not being able to pay attention. Sometimes they, can, sometimes they can struggle with that just a little bit more. Uh, do we have any questions? Very good. One question. Nice. I'll do one. Um, when was ADHD first diagnosed? Well, like in, like in the yeah, yeah. Well, when was it first uh, recognized as a as as an issue as a, as a issue with children or people in general and treated? I don't know the exact time frame. I knew, I do know it was in the DSM three. Um, the what, what DSM three? Um, this book of psychology. Yeah, I think it's diagnostic statistical manual or something yeah. for psychology. Yeah. We're now in we're now in the uh, fifth. We're now in DSM-5. Uh, when was your child diagnosed with that? Mine was diagnosed, in, uh, he's eight, so about two years ago. Uh, he, they diagnosed him after he got held back in kindergarten. Why did you think that he has anything? Was he overactive, less active? Well, I think, I think that, <laughs> I think that my, he has only child syndrome. Um, I, he was also premature. Um, he's also the only was only the gr only grandchild, and so I think a lot of it is, um, you know, a lot of people did stuff for him on a regular basis, and then he just did the video games. And since my husband and I have been together, you know, we've worked with him. He has calmed down quite a bit, and um, we we don't discourage using uh, technology because I love the smart board and all that stuff. But I do discourage when that's all they do. Um, there for a while, that was about all he was doing. But he had so many different things ha going on for him. I mean, he was premature. He was three pounds when he was born. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I have I have three qu more questions. If you don't have, so if I give you the. Uh, and Janice said it was about the early 1900s. 1900s. Do you want? Uh, there are some psychologists that they believe that there's no no such a disease like ADHD, and I have no idea. I just think that 
it's a it's a good idea to think to see it in an, uh, another aspect aspect it's like um maybe as you said there are some reasons that makes you feel like this kid needs some help not drugs other things so do you think it's true or not um personally i think he's a boy he's an eight-year-old boy and uh if i remember all the eight-year-old boys i mean i'm a lot older than most of you but i if i think about all the eight-year-old boys when i was in school they were all crazy I dragons and <laughs> cowboys <laughs> indians all that stuff they were always running around they were always doing stuff so I, sometimes i think he's just an average eight-year-old uh, little boy but then when i watch him when he's learning I, and I read this stuff and I know more about this stuff. I, I, I can see his his learning, but I, I'm not necessarily sure that it is. ADHD. Yeah, I, I'm not really necessarily sure that yeah, it's, I know. so it's, it's complicated in my opinion. Sure, uh, some of our research even said to be very cautious diagnosing a younger s a child because younger children just naturally have a shorter attention span and they're naturally more active than say older children or adolescents or anything like that. So you need to be very careful that you're looking at um, the diagnostic, diagnostic and statistical man manual of medical, uh, mental disorders, if I could talk, um, to make sure you're looking at that to see if you're actually diagnosing them correctly and look at the family history and the medical history and everything like that, that you're not just making a rash decision. And I would suggest that, I would think it'd be better to try some behavioral methods first and see if maybe just changing something in the classroom might help before jumping um, to prescription drugs or something like that. I know, like I said, when I was student teaching, there was a few students that um, the teacher said, well, they should probably get on medication or something like that. It's like, well, can't we try something else first? You know, maybe just well, um, we move the desk away from everyone else. Sometimes little things like that just make a world of difference. That's, and that's <coughs> a definite issue today is we took him off the medication, and he was off the medication at the beginning of this year, but the teacher said that he was being a problem and that he needed to go back on the medication, and so the doctor and his mom put him back on the medication. But the problem was he was overactive? Yeah, he was, he was talking in class, and instead of m moving him or doing some things, she suggested that he needed, it was either putting him back on the medication or putting him in special education. And he's a very bright boy. Like he can draw and he can write. He writes a short story since he's eight on the computer. Um, he's he's really very talented. And so it was. But once I, I also f found out that if I'm honest with him and I tell him the truth about how things work, you know, if you don't show them that you're smart, then they're never gonna know that you're smart. And so since I've been talking to him about that. He's being more active, proactive in class and stuff, so that helps. Now, there is a trend in the society now to take things that are behavioral and they say it is a disease that needs medication. For some reason, I mean, some behaviors that are kind of shifting from a behavioral stuff, behavioral thing, to, oh, that's a disease. You have to take medicine for that. How true is this about? ADD and ADHD and all this stuff. Because I have another question that I want you to verify for me. Just help me with that. <laughs> I, I think there are, I, I, I really think that there are probably some children who probably do need the medication. Um, I, I, I don't know, you know, there's all sorts of different things in the world, and I can say that, you know, with like stuff like post-traumatic stress disorder or OCD or ADHD or ADD, there are actual like behavioral strategies that you could use instead of medication to help move these things along. Um, there's, there's people who are eating crazy things because they just can't stop themselves. Um, it, there's, but there's actual psychology that you can use instead of a drug. I'm going to use it, um, an example very loosely here. Some parents are busy, so they just put any video tape for the children just to get rid of them and concentrate on their work. So could it be that <coughs> whoever the teacher or the parents or whatever give him a medication to... to that is true. That happens 
So it is really our pro it's, uh, we are the problem, not the children. I actually wrote it in my paper that you know that you people as parents should be educated when they're having the baby before they have the baby, like have to take a mandatory education on you know what parenting is. <laughs> I mean, you, you, are, you are touching on a very important thing. No, nobody studies what marriage is yeah. to start with, and they just jump in and have more problems or many problems. I will say that, you know, my, my, my older son, my 14-year-old, who is very, very, very smart, he, at one year old, could go and put a DVD in the thing and put it in and watch a movie until I woke up at five, like, because he'd get up at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, but we had educational stuff and like his video games was like the v-smile and we had like you know things that would make their brain work instead of let's shoot them up kill them up and <coughs> i think it depends on the technology you're and the actual game you're using and at what age you're doing it minecraft or minecraft is huge to, to, to I, <laughs> my kids are all of my kids have minecraft it's like a drug Xbox. it's like cocaine or heroin <laughs> what's that Jim? minecraft I have a nephew. He's eight year. Old. He's probably playing it right now, oh, yeah. because it's so it's so it's such an addictive game. My son's fourteen. I have a fourteen year old son who plays that game. I have a ten year old daughter who plays this game, and I have an eight year old son that plays that game. As soon as one of you guys said so, talked about the video games about focusing on achieving a thing and then getting a reward, I was like, oh, Jesus, that's like Minecraft. <laughs> My eight year old son's actual birthday party was a Minecraft party. So well, like two, 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 two quick. Two quick questions. First, what's the difference between ADE and ADHD? Uh, sorry, AD, it, ADD and ADHD. ADD is just the uh, attention deficit. Uh, they can't, they can't pay attention uh, very well. Yeah, and then ADHD is where they can't pay attention very well, but they're always like on the go and they're always hyper. Okay. How would you say about there is nobody is absent? It's, uh, they are, are uh, present somewhere else. If they are absent from you and you're seeing that they are here, they are somewhere else. So it's the medication is not to do something to them, but to see where, where their mind is going there and do your homework as a doctor or physician or parent or teacher or something. Well, if the medication is not used right, if the medication is not used right, it can make you daydream. It can make you go, it's, it's a side effect to, to daydream. And if, it, if you're giving it to somebody who doesn't need it, then you're hurting them. those are the side effects. That's why you see all these house moms taking Ritalin because they don't need it. It's something, it gives them something completely different than it would give somebody who has ADHD. Two weeks ago, I received an email, didn't get a chance to verify it. So please verify it. They say that the physician, the scientist who invented or started the ADD movement or ADHD movement and all the medication <laughs> before he died. I wish he's still alive, but he died. That's what I read in the email. He confessed that he made all this up and it's, there's nothing like ADD, there's nothing called ADHD, and he has some, cor some relations with medication or drug companies, pharmaceutical, uh, companies. pharmaceutical companies, and it's a big billion dollar thing with the frenzy of everything is disease, everything has needs a medicine. Now, I cannot confirm or deny, I am just telling you the email that came to me. Is it a conspiracy theory? Is it this? I don't know. So please verify it. Uh, well, one, just one last point. Some of the medications are effective. You know, I mean, it's not, I don't think if you give a kid a medication for one of the d diseases uh, and it allows the, the child to focus or it improves the behavior, I don't think that should be frowned upon necessarily. I, I mean, so we, we are chemical, electrical creatures, amazingly. So if you put some chemistry in me or some electrical, I'll react some ho somehow. But I'm affecting some other stuff. So how much to, de to do? I mean, it's a big thing. Yes. I know, um, you know, kind of along the lines of what, you know, you were saying and what Brandy was saying that, you know, it's not necessarily that giving a medication like Ritalin or, you know, some of the others is bad, you know, if it's necessary. And I have seen, you know, cases where, because I've worked at CTF, I've worked at DFI, I've worked with children in schools who have, you know, ADHD and all sorts of other, you know, things. And, you know, I understand that, you know, some of these medicines do actually work and help curve, you know, some of the 
loss of attention or some of the, you know, jitteriness or the I've got to do this, I've got to do that, and the, the thousand and one thoughts going on up here while they're supposed to be here, you know, at this one point. But for some kids, it's they have what I call the NAW um, HD, and that's just need a whooping, uh, hyperactive, you know what I mean? Because some kids, it's just a matter of discipline and or, and or, you know, behavior, as I call it, behavior modification. So like what Brandy was saying, you know, making sure that there's a set schedule, making sure that the kid is allowed to, yeah, do the fun things they want to do, video games and whatnot, but they're also, you know, they're made to focus on their academics, they're made to do this, and it, it just takes a parent putting their foot down or a teacher putting their foot down and providing structure along with that fun and that extra stuff that they want to do. So sometimes it's not always ADHD. Sometimes it's just, you know, behavior modification, as I call it. Well, they, uh, they say, too, that one doesn't cause the other, but um, children that suffer from ADHD can also suffer from other disorders, too. They're more likely than other children to suffer from other disorders, like oppositional defiant disorder, bipolar disorder, things like that. So they could also be suffer. you know. I think medication is better when it's like the the older kid type frame I don't think that giving it I'm not I'm not for giving it to an eight-year-old boy I'm not for giving it to anybody under the age of like 14 15 even actually I would prefer that they be an adult to be honest because adults do suffer from it um, so I guess my problem is is I I don't like the medication because I've seen what it does to him and I personally am in a that you know there has to be a disciplinary now uh, we don't advise you to stop this because I mean uh, it's it's a matter of thinking and uh, what a group of thinkers you are people so <laughs> just give it the third don't stop medication oh, no, I, my <laughs> husband and my husband's ex-wife I just have an opinion <laughs> well please give them a hand <laughs>